Hi, Internet. It's 8 o'clock. This is my face. That's a book. We are live. Time for Chapter 3 of The Scarecrow of Oz. Book 9 in the Oz series. In keeping with the typical L. Frank Baum pattern at this point, uh, we are a decent ways into the book, and we've not yet met the Scarecrow. The title character of the book hasn't shown up in the first few chapters. Because why would he be in the book called The Scarecrow of Oz? So far we've met Trot and Bill, and there was a weird bird-like creature that showed up at the end of the last chapter in the middle of their cave. And the underside of the sea where they were sailing and got sucked down into a whirlpool. Let's find out what happens in chapter 3. Chapter 3 is entitled The Orc. <clears throat> the eyes that regarded them as the creature stood dripping before them were bright and mild in expression. And the queer addition to their party made no attempt to attack them and seemed quite as surprised by the meeting as they were. I wonder, whispered Trot, what it is. Who oh, me? exclaimed the creature in a shrill, high-pitched voice. Why, I'm an orc! Oh, oh, said the girl, but, but what is an orc? I am, he repeated a little proudly, as he shook the water from his funny wings. And if ever an orc was glad to be out of the water and on dry land again, you can be mighty sure that I'm that a special individual orc. This voice is so annoying. I'm sorry. I'm really hoping this character's not long term in this book because that voice is going to get old real quick. That's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, it is. Have you been in the water long? inquired Captain Bill, thinking it was only polite to show an interest in the strange creature. Why, this last ducking was about ten minutes, I believe. And that's about nine minutes and sixty seconds too long for comfort, was the reply. But last night I was in an awful pickle, I assure you. The whirlpool caught me and... Oh, were you in the whirlpool too? asked Trot eagerly. He gave her a glance that was somewhat reproachful. I believe I was mentioning that fact, young lady, when your desire to talk interrupted me. I like this bird more and more. I am not usually careless in my actions. But that whirlpool was so busy yesterday I thought I'd see what mischief it was up to. So I flew a little too near to it and the suction of the air drew me down into the depths of the ocean. Water and I are natural enemies and it would have conquered me this time had not a bevy of pretty mermaids come to my assistance and dragged me away from the whirling water and far up into a cavern where they deserted me. Why, that's about the same thing as happened to us, cried Trot. Was your cavern like this one? I haven't examined this one yet, answered the orc. But if they happen to be alike, I shudder at our fate. For the other one was a prison, with no outlet except by means of the water. Stayed there all night, however, and this morning I plunged into the pool far down as I could go. Swam as hard as I could, as far as I could, the rocks, they scraped my back now and then, and I, and I barely escaped the clutches of the ugly sea monster, but it, by and by I came to the surface to catch my breath and found myself here. That's the whole story, and as I see you have some to eat, I entreat you to give me a share of it. Truth is, I'm half starved. With these words, the orc squatted down beside them. Very reluctantly, Captain Bill drew another biscuit from his pocket and held it out. The orc promptly seized it in one of his front claws and began to nibble the biscuit in much the same manner a parrot might have done. We haven't much, Grub, said the sailor man, but we're willing to share it with a comrade in distress. That's right, returned the orc, cocking its head sidewise in a cheerful manner, and then for a few minutes they were silence. There was silence while all they all ate the biscuits. After a while, Trot said, I've never seen or heard of an orc before. Are there many of you? We are rather few and exclusive, I believe, was the reply. In the country where I was born, we are the absolute rulers of all living things, from ants to elephants. And what country is that? asked Captain Bill. Orkland! And, and where does it lie? Don't know exactly. 
You see, I have a restless nature for some reason, while all the rest of my race are quiet and contented orcs, seldom stray far from home. From childhood days, I loved to fly long distances away, although father often warned me I would get into trouble by doing so. It's a big world, Slipper, my son, he would say, and I've heard that in parts of it live queer two-legged creatures called men who war upon all other living things and would have little respect for even an orc. Oh, good God, this orc never shuts up. <laughs> There's just like page after page of orc talk. My voice is going to get real tired of this. I'm sorry. Your ears are going to get tired of it, too. This naturally aroused my curiosity, and after I'd completed my education and left school, I decided to fly out into the world, try to get a glimpse of all the creatures called men. So I left home without saying goodbye, an act I shall always regret. So where are the it, creatures? Huh? I'm where sorry, I thought I was reading. Where are the creatures? Where are the... They're in, they're in a cave? No, under where the, oh. are the creatures? Where... I don't know where. We I'm trying, are creatures. We are the... Okay. Yes, I'm so glad I stopped reading for that. Continue. Okay. <laughs> um, I lost my place. I sighted men several times, but have never before been so close to them as now. Also, I had to fight my way through the air, for I met gigantic birds with fluffy feathers all over them, which attacked me fiercely. Besides, it kept me busy escaping from floating airships. In my rambling, I had lost all track of distance or direction, so that when I decided to go home, I had no idea where my country was located. I've now been trying to find it for several months, and it was during one of my flights over the ocean that I met the whirlpool and became its victim. Trot and Captain Bill listened to this recital with much interest. And from the friendly tone and harmless appearance of the orc... Oh, now he has a friendly tone. At first he had a shrill tone, which is what led to me making this regrettable choice. From the friendly tone and harmless appearance of the orc, they judged he was not likely to prove so disagreeable a companion as at first they had feared he might be. The orc sat upon its haunches, much as a cat does, but used the finger-like claws of its front legs almost as cleverly as if they were hands. Perhaps the most curious thing about the creature was its tail, or what ought to have been its tail. This queer arrangement of skin, bones, and muscle was shaped like the propellers used on boats and airships, having fan-like surfaces and being pivoted to its body. Captain Bill knew something of mechanics, and observing the propeller-like tail of the orc, he said, I suppose you're a pretty swift flyer. Yes, indeed, the orcs are admitted to be kings of the air. Your wings don't seem to amount to much. Well, they are not very big, admitted the orc, waving the four hollow skins gently to and fro. But they serve to support my body in the air while I speed along by means of my tail. Still taken all together, I'm very handsomely formed, don't you think? Trot did not like to reply, but Captain Bill nodded gravely. For an orc, said he, you're a wonder. Never seen one afore, and I can imagine you're as good as any. That seemed to please the creature, and it began walking around the cavern, making its way easily up the slope. While it was gone, Trot and Captain Bill each took another sip from the water flask to wash down their breakfast. Why, here's a hole, an exit, an outlet! exclaimed the orc from above. We know, said Trot. We found it last night. Well, then let's be off, continued the orc, after sticking its head into the black hole and sniffing once or twice. The air seems fresh and sweet. Can't lead to any place worse than this. The girl and the sailor man got up and climbed to the side of the orc. Good lord, chapter three is really long. And so much orc. Well, we decided to explore this hole before you came, explained Captain Bill. But it's a dangerous place to navigate in the dark. So wait till I light, so wait till I light a candle. What is a candle? inquired the orc. You'll, you'll see in a minute, said Trot. The old sailor drew one of the matches from his right side pocket and the tin match box from his left side pocket. When he lighted the match, the orc gave a startled jump and eyed the flame suspiciously. But Captain Bill proceeded to light the candle and the action interested the orc very much. Light, it said somewhat nervously, is valuable in a hole of this sort. 
A candle is not dangerous, I hope. Eh, sometimes it burns your fingers, answered Trot. But that's about the worst it can do, except to blow out when you don't want it to. Captain Bill shielded the flame with his hand and crept into the hole. It wasn't any too big for a grown man, but after he had crawled a few feet, it grew larger. Trot came close behind him, and then the orc followed. Seems like a regular tunnel, muttered the sailor man, who was creeping along awkwardly because of his wooden leg. The rocks, too, hurt his knee. For nearly half an hour, the three moved slowly along the tunnel, which made many twists and turns, and sometimes slanted downward and sometimes upward. Finally, Captain Bill stopped short with an exclamation of disappointment and held the flickering candle far ahead to light the scene. "'What's wrong?' demanded Trot, who could see nothing because the sailor's form completely filled the hole. "'Why, we've come to the end of our travels, I guess,' he replied. "'Is the hole blocked?' inquired the orc. "'No, nah, it's wuss nor that.' "'It's wuss nor that,' replied Captain Bill sadly. "'I'm on the edge of a precipice. Wait a minute and I'll move along and let you see for yourselves. Be careful, Trot, not to fall.' Then he crept forward a little and moved to one side, holding the candle so the girl could see not to follow him. Or, could see to follow him. <laughs> the orc came next, and now all three knelt on a narrow ledge of rock, which dropped straight away and left a huge black space with the tiny flame of the candle could not illuminate. Hmm, said the orc, peering over the edge. This doesn't look very promising, I'll admit. But let me take your candle and I'll fly down and see what's below us. Aren't you afraid? asked Trot. Certainly I'm afraid, responded the orc. But if we intend to escape, we can't stay on this shelf forever. So as I notice, your poor creatures cannot fly. It's my duty to explore the place for you. Captain Bill handed the orc the candle, which had now burned to about half its length. The orc took it in one claw rather cautiously, then tipped its body forward and slipped over the edge. They heard a queer buzzing sound as the tail revolved and a brisk flapping of the peculiar wings they were more interested just then in following with their eyes the tiny speck of light which marked the location of the candle. This light first made a great circle, then dropped slowly downward and suddenly was extinguished, leaving everything before them black as ink. Hi there! How did that happen? cried the orc. Blew out, I guess, shouted Captain Bill. Fetch it here. I can't see where you are, said the orc. So Captain Bill got out another candle and lighted it, and its flame enabled the orc to fly back to them. It alighted on the edge and held out the bit of candle. Well, what made it stop burning? asked the creature. The wind, said Trot. You must be more careful this time. Well, what's this place like? inquired Captain Bill. I don't know yet, but there must be a bottom to it, so I'll try to find it. With this, the orc started out again, and this time sank downward more slowly. Down, down, down it went, till the candle was a mere spark. Then it headed away to the left, and Trot and Captain Bill lost all sight of it. In a few minutes, however, they saw the spark of light again, and as the sailor still held the second lighted candle, the orc made straight toward them. It was only a few yards distant when suddenly it dropped the candle with a cry of pain, and next moment alighted, fluttering wildly upon the rocky ledge. "'What's the matter?' asked Trot. "'It bit me!' wailed the orc. "'I don't like your candles. They began to disappear slowly as soon as I took it in my claw. It grew smaller and smaller until just now it turned and bit me. A most unfriendly thing to do!' Ouch, what a bite. Well, that's the nature of candles, I'm sorry to say, explained Captain Bill with a grin. You have to handle them mighty careful. But tell us, what'd you find down there? I found a way to continue our journey, said the orc, nursing tenderly the claw which had been burned. Just below us is a great lake of black water, which looked so cold and wicked it made me shudder. But away at the left there's a big tunnel which we can easily walk through. I don't know where it leads to, of course. We must follow it and find out. Well, we can't get to it, protested the little girl. We can't fly as you do, you must remember. No, that's true, replied the orc musingly. Your bodies are built poorly, it seems to me, since all you can do is crawl upon the earth's surface. But you may ride upon my back, and in that way I can promise you a safe journey to the tunnel. Are you strong enough to carry us? asked Captain Bill. Yes, indeed, I'm strong enough to carry a dozen of you. If you can find a place to sit, was the reply. There's only room between my wings for one at a time, so I have to make two trips. All right, I'll go first, decided Captain Bill. He lit another candle for Trot to hold while they were gone, and to light the orc on his return to her. 
Then the old sailor got upon the orc's back where he sat with his wooden legs sticking straight out sidewise. If you start to fall, clasp your arms around my neck, advised the creature. If I start to fall, it's good night and pleasant dreams, said Cap'n Bill. Already? asked the orc. Start to buzz tail, said Cap'n Bill with a tremble in his voice. But the orc flew away so gently that the old man never even tottered in his seat. Trot watched the light of Cap'n Bill's candle till it disappeared in the far distance. She didn't like to be left alone on this dangerous ledge with a lake of black water hundreds of feet below her, but she was a brave little girl and waited patiently for the return of the orc. It came even sooner than she had expected, and the creature said to her, Your friend is safe in the tunnel. Now get aboard and I'll carry you to him in a jiffy. I'm not sure how many little girls would have cared to take that awful ride to the huge black cavern on the back of a skinny orc. Trot didn't care for it herself, but it just had to be done, so she did it as courageously as possible. Her heart beat fast and she was so nervous she could scarcely hold the candle in her fingers as the orc sped swiftly through the darkness. It seemed like a long ride to her, yet in reality the orc covered the distance in a wonderfully brief period of time, and soon Trot stood safely beside Captain Bill on the level floor of the big arch tunnel. The sailor man was very glad to greet his little comrade again, and both were grateful to the orc for his assistance. I don't know where this tunnel leads to, remarked Captain Bill, but it surely looks more promising than that other hole we make we crept through. When the orc is rested, said Trot, we'll travel on and see what happens. Rested? cried the orc as scornfully as his shrill voice would allow. That bit of flying didn't tire me at all. I'm used to flying days at a time without ever once stopping. Well, let's move on, proposed Captain Bill. He still held in his hand one lighted candle, so Trot blew out the other flame and placed her candle in the sailor's big pocket. She knew it was not wise to burn two candles at once. The tunnel was straight and smooth and very easy to walk through, so they made good progress. Trot thought they, that the tunnel began about two miles from the cavern where they had been cast by the whirlpool, but now it was impossible to guess the miles traveled, for they walked steadily for hours and hours without any change in their surroundings. Finally, Captain Bill stopped to rest. There's something queer about this here tunnel, I'm certain, he declared, wagging his head dolefully. Here's three candles gone already, and only three more left us, and yet the tunnel's same as when we started, and how long it's going to keep up, no one knows. Well, couldn't we walk without a light? asked Trot. The way seems safe enough. It does right now, was the reply, but we can't tell when we're likely to come to another gulf or something just as dangerous. In that case, we'd be killed before we knew it. Suppose I go ahead, suggested the orc. I don't fear a fall, you know. If anything happens, I'll call out and warn you. That's a good idea, declared Trot, and Captain Bill thought so too. So the orc started off ahead, quite in the dark, and hand in hand the two followed him. When they'd walked this way a good long time, the orc halted and demanded food. Captain Bill had not mentioned food because there was so little left, only three biscuits and a lump of cheese about as big as his two fingers. But he gave the orc half a biscuit, sighing as he did so. The creature didn't care for the cheese, so the sailor divided it between himself and Trot. They lighted a candle and sat down in the tunnel while they ate. My feet hurt now, grumbled the orc. I'm not used to walking like this, and the rocky passage is so uneven and lumpy. It hurts me to walk upon it. Can't you fly along? asked Trot. No, the roof is too low, said the orc. After the meal, they resumed their journey, which Trot began to fear would never end. When Cap Bill noticed how tired the little girl was, he paused and lighted a match and looked at her big silver, his big silver watch. Why, it's night, he exclaimed. We've tramped all day, and still we're in this awful passage. Maybe it goes straight through the middle of the world, and maybe it's a circle in which else we can keep walking till doomsday. Not knowing what's before us so well as we know what's behind us, I propose we make a stop now and try to sleep till morning. That'll suit me, asserted the orc with a groan. My feet are hurting dreadfully, and for the last few miles I've been limping with pain. Well, my foot hurts too, said the sailor, looking for a smooth place on the rocky floor to sit down. "'Your foot!' cried the orc. "'Why, you've only one to hurt you while I have four. "'So I suffer four times as much as you possibly can. "'Here, hold the candle while I look at the bottom of my claws. "'I declare,' he said, ex examining them by the flickering light, "'there are bunches of paint all over them. "'Perhaps,' said Trot, who was very glad to sit down beside her companions, "'perhaps you got corns.' "'Corns? Nonsense! Orcs never have corns!' protested the creature, rubbing its sore feet tenderly. 
And maybe they're, uh, they're, what do you call them, Captain Bill? Something about Pilgrim's Progress, you know? Bunions, said Captain Bill. Oh, yes, maybe you got bunions. It is possible, moaned the orc. Whatever they are, another day of such walking on them would drive me crazy. I'm sure they'll feel better by morning, said Captain Bill encouragingly. Go try to sleep and forget your sore feet. The orc cast a reproachful look at the sailor man who didn't see it. Then the creature asked plaintively, Do we eat now or do we starve? There's only half a biscuit left for you, answered Captain Bill. No one knows how long I stay in this dark tunnel and there's nothing to whatever to eat. So I advise you save that morsel of food till later. Give it to me now, demanded the orc. If I'm going to starve, I'll do it all at once, not by degrees. Captain Bill produced the biscuit and the creature ate it in a trice. Trot was rather hungry and whispered to Captain Bill that she'd take part of her share. The old man secretly broke his own half-biscuit in two, saving Trot's share for a time of greater need. He was beginning to be worried over the little girl's plight, and long after she was asleep and the orc was snoring in a rather disagreeable manner, Captain Bill sat with his back to a rock and smoked his pipe and tried to think of some way to escape from this seemingly endless tunnel. But after a time he also slept, for hobbling on a wooden leg all day was tiresome. And there in the dark slumbered the three adventurers for many hours, until the orc roused itself and kicked the old sailor with one foot. Must be another day, said he. And that is the end of chapter three, The Orc. Oh, goodness, that was something. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you join us again tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, right here on Facebook Live, where we'll read chapter four, Daylight at Last. They're going to get out this tunnel someday. I'll see you then, guys. Good night.